Hello, my name is Roberta. I'm the one of family of five. I'm Italian by ancestry, but I have been raised in America for most of my life. Previously, my family and I were secular Christians, but Baruch Hashem, Hashem guided us to the truth of Judaism through Rabbi Yaron Roven and Rabbi Yosef Misalaki. Now, as no hides, we continue to learn and follow Hashem throughout our daily life. My sister and I also volunteer Bezerat Hashem in order to spread Hashem light to others. This light is what has kept us going through this time of darkness that we have faced during the fire in Lahaina, Maui, and which you will now be telling you about. The story of Roberta. August 7 was the start of the entire series of events that my family and I were going to experience in the coming days. However, if you have told us that at the time, we would have likely not believed you. August 7, in fact, was even a day of celebration for my family, having been my sister's birthday. Baruch Hashem, Hashem enabled my sister to have a calm and fun birthday without any problems. We have given a foreshadowing of what was to come. We had gone shopping for a few things when suddenly, out of nowhere, the store had a blackout. It had been very windy, but I had not suspected anything strange. The power outage was soon resolved, and we journeyed back home, where we soon forgot about the blackout and neglected to pray to Hashem about the unusual weather condition. But we pray as usual. The next day, everything changed. My two sisters woke up around 5.15 a.m. to complete darkness, real pitch black darkness. Immediately, we knew the power had gone out, and even discovered how it did when we heard the hole on the wind. Although the successfully managed to spook us, I again did not think much of it, and prayed to Hashem much more because of habit than because of fear. After all, typically, these things always end very quickly, and I figured it would be all good in the morning. To my despair, the power outage remained, with the constant accompaniment of the strong winds I've learned were from a hurricane far, far away from Maui. Nevertheless, I still retain the belief that it would only be a matter of hours until the power outage was fixed, and a hurricane that far away would not be an issue. I continue to pray and learn Torah, only as I usually would on an ordinary day, and my family too. At around 4 or 5 in the afternoon, the, after, the house, despite being fairly lit up by sunlight, began to darken. We crossed into the living room only to find the sky clouded with a black smoke and a small fire beginning to set the plants outside our home aflame. This was when we began to realize some of the gravity of our situation and began to really beg to Hashem for this situation. My family came together and began to pray for safety and learned Torah much more fervently. Later in the evening, something terrible happened. There was a knock on the door, and my father rushed to open it. But despite having opened it quickly, he found no one there. To this day, we never found out who it was. Perhaps it was a fair father who had run as fast as the wind and who heard no noise from. That seems very unlikely, or perhaps it was Elijah, the prophet, who was shed and sent in order to save us. All we know is that this knock saved our lives. If we ne have never heard it, we would never have left our apartment and would have suffocated. This especially since there were no sign and no clear warning to evacuate. Outside, we found an enormous fire from the apartment beside us, a ferocious steam heat and the smoke we stung at the nostril and throat. Up until then, we had not seen the extent of the fire, as there had been no ability to check the news as well, no alert, seeing no call for our area. We grabbed a few of our things and dashed out our apartment to our car, found the only further destruction near our building, and we sped toward the entrance. We seemed to be in hell, with fire furiously lashing out at us, a smoke that clothed our throat, and only the remnant of the familiar places from our past. In front of them, like across the exit, was a fallen power, power line. We were trapped. We could not risk driving over the power line and found our only means of escape close to us. We raced back to the parking lot, searching for any hope where we out. 
It was there that Hashem bless us with another one of the countless miracles we received. Several firefighters we, we had not seen there in the parking lot when we had left the house had up to us and escorted us out of our compound. From there we ran through the makeshift hole in the fence and down through the old canal. We gripped the mask around our faces, carefully scaled the side of the canal to get the safe ground. The wall was incredibly steep and my younger sister and I nearly fell. But thank Hashem, we only sustained a few scratches and managed to make it up to where a pickup truck awaited us. We have been rendered homeless in a matter of hours. Hashem tested our emuna. Would our building still be standing? Even with so much around it being in flames, I have faith in Hashem and hope my building would be there. But I also pray myself for the situation where it would be burned down and knew that whatever Hashem did was best. My younger sister, on the other hand, only 14 years old, had no doubt. She continued to tell us that she knew the building would be there and we should, we should not lose hope. Until we are able to see our home, we pray, learn, hope that Hashem would bless us with this miracle. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, we returned to Lahaina. Without a car, we had to walk approximately 13 miles in order to return sleeping in Haiti poorly during our journey. We truly could not have done it without the strength Hashem bless us with. Finally, as we neared the home, we saw our building in the distance. It was truly a moment of shock in my family. We cried out in pure relief as soon as entered the compound itself. There we found the building around the entrance of the compound, as well as the building only 130 feet away from our home had been rendered piles of ashes and debris. Thank Hashem that the fire never reached our building. Despite the fact that the fire father said that everything in the area will burn, there was even part of an outdoor garage car covered that. If they hit our building window, would have cut on fire like the building nearby. Unbelievably, despite the high wind, it only hit the wall that pushed back. And so our home was completely safe. No one would have believed the horror Ornella. But what we must thank Hashem for most of all is not the building of our lives, but for Rabbi Yezak Zilber's inspiring book, To Remain a Jew, which I managed to grab quickly before evacuating and read throughout the crisis, and Rabbi Yaron Reven's invitation lecture. Before the fire, we were watching this amazing lecture and Rabbi Yosef Mizraki incredible series on Psalms. This was a lecture that helped give my family the moon and confidence that enabled us to survive and have hope. During the disaster, we understood that Hashem had control of everything, and that everything was not the best. What kept me going was what Rabbi Reuven said about Jacob the Prophet. After learning Torah for 14 years and still without sleeping, you would think he deserved a lot from Hashem. But as a matter of fact, Jacob himself didn't think that he only prayed to Hashem for food and water. Upon reflecting on it today, I know that I didn't deserve the food in my life, just like I didn't deserve the air I breathe or the food I eat. Yet Hashem gives us those things every day of our lives. If we don't give anything to Hashem, but He only gives us blessing and gift. So I wish to serve Hashem in one of the best ways I can, Kiro. During the disaster, I pray to Him that He will have mercy on us and protect us in our building. Moreover, I pray to Him. I continue to pray to Him now that we can take our story and use it for great purpose. To tell others about this incredible story, sanctifying His name. As we know now, Hashem gave us all this and more. We know that Hashem knows that what is best for us. If something happens, we must remember that everything is for the best. This means that the best possible circumstances we can be in right now. Since we don't know our future, we can trust only Hashem, not ourselves and not other people. By reflecting back on what happened so far, we see that it's showing us that he's always there with us, every single second of the time. He's there in the details, in that few second knock, in that garage cover, and so much more. 
Hashem solo si sostena se kept us safe as perform miracles we never imagine. Many times I find that people, including myself, tend to look at things with complete pessimism. We tend to feel discouraged, alone, hopeless. But he is there to guide us out of the tunnel, in the road, into the light outside. Amazingly, Hashem led me when I was rushing to leave my party with my family. I may have forgot to bring my medicine and my credit cards, but I took with me the Torah, the CD and cards of Rabbi Rev. I can tell you that just keep in follow the Torah and do it off, everyone will see unbelievable miracles in life, like we saw. Thank you. הרבנים, הרב ירון ראובן, הרב אפרים כחלון, ראשי ארגון בעזרת השם, שהלכו בפעליון, שעלו מעלה מעלה, יהיה להם ברכה והצלחה, הקדוש ברוך הוא ימלא בשלות ליבם, לטובה ולברכה, שבכל אשר יפנו, ישכילו ויצליחו, יזכו עוד לעשות כאלה וכאלה, הודיעו תורה לאדירה, אמן ואמן.